That's a nice little plane there. So as you're getting started as a web developer, the chances are high that you will follow a few guides. And even though they are beginner's guides, they can be a bit challenging and might contain some command line commands that you're supposed to run. And if any command would fail along the path, you might get really confused and you might end up not completing the guide. And that does not feel so good when you're starting out. So I want to give you my simplest way to get started with web development and it will just require you to install one program called Visual Studio Code which is a text editor. Once we have Visual Studio Code installed, we can create three files, one HTML file, one CSS file, and one JavaScript file. And then we can just simply install this extension that gives us a web server. And that will enable us to view our content and see our JavaScript run. And to me, that is the absolute simplest way to get started. And it's really fail safe and should work on any operating system and it should be really easy to do. So let's do that together and have a look at how it works. All right, let's get on with the tutorial. So first step is to install Visual Studio Code. So I just googled for VS Code here and I will click the first link and then download for Windows. Just wait a bit. We wait a tiny bit. Okay, we will accept the agreements. We will choose a location. We will create a desktop icon. We will add the Visual Studio code to the path because then we can do code inside our terminal and open Visual Studio code. We can also do code space dot to open Visual Studio code in the folder that we're in in the terminal, which is very useful. Okay, we're also going to launch Visual Studio Code here. And this is what we initially see. And we're gonna open a folder. And I have a folder called Website on the Desktop that we will choose. So here's our folder. And we're gonna need three files. The HTML file. We're gonna need a style.css file. And you can name it whatever you like but I choose a style and a main.javascript and you can name that also whatever you like but it has to end in .js in order to get a template for the html file I can use emmet so if I type an exclamation mark I get a suggestion here it says emmet abbreviation and if I press enter it will stub out the basis of an html page so to include the css file I will do a link tag link. and here we can use Emmet again if we just type link press enter it will do it for us so we just have to pass the name and it will auto complete that for us as well so now we should have included our CSS file and we will validate that we did it correctly in just a minute we should also add a script tag and here we can also do an emmet abbreviation and I will choose this one script source our source is main.js so now we have what we need but we're going to create some more markup because the usual hello world example that most JavaScript frameworks frameworks use is to add a increment button and have a counter that is updated. So we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna build it, of course, in just vanilla JavaScript as a quick little example. So I will add a button, and I will use the emmet again, like that, and it will say increment. And then we should add a display for our current count. So I'll just put a div, I can use emmet again, and I want to have an ID on this div because we want to get this div via our JavaScript later. So we'll say count display. That's what we're going to call it. We'll give it that ID and we'll set this to zero by default. So now 
we want to actually see what we have done so far. And then it's very easy to, in Visual Studio Code, add an extension. So we will search for live server. This one is very popular and has great reviews. So we will install this one. And now we see down here in our status bar, we have a button that says go live. When we do that, live server will serve the folder that we're in. So it will deliver, it will run a web server locally and deliver the index.html file for us. So I will press go live. It's going to start up and I will choose Chrome. So here we have it. So we have our button and we have our count display here. But let's validate that our CSS file is actually being imported into the document here. So we will add, we will change the color of the body. I will say background is now black. And if we change the background to black, then our text is also black, so we won't see it. So we will change the text to be white. And then we can go back and see that it is in fact working and that's great. So now we want to validate that our JavaScript is being run and then we can just do a console.log. Hello from main.js. I'll save that and the website should reload on its own. So here in our console, we can see that it is in fact working. So we're all good to go to start writing the JavaScript that will make this button come alive because right now it's not doing anything. So we can remove our console log, but we want to get a reference to the DOM elements that we're interested in and they are two, right? So we will say const increment button and then we can do document dot query selector and then we can use a CSS selector in here. If we say button here, since we only have one button, it should be fine to just take the, the element type and we're going to validate that this line works as well. And one cool thing you can do in JavaScript is to just type the keyword debugger. If I do that and we go back to the browser, we'll see that the debugger stops on that line. So if I hover this increment button, you will see that it's an object that is describing this DOM element. We can also see here in the DOM that as I hover the variable, the DOM element is also highlighted. So that all seems to work fine. So I will remove the debugger and to get the JavaScript to run again, I have to click resume script execution. So now we also want a reference to the, the count display. And there we set an ID of count display. So I will do count display is equal to document dot query selector. And to reference an ID, we do count display like this with a hash in front. And now let's also validate this one. And then instead of doing the debugger this time, I'm going to do a console log again. Count display. So here we see that we do in fact get this div logged out to the console. And as I hover it, the correct div is being highlighted in the DOM. So that's great. So the last thing we need to do is to add an event listener to the button in order to increment this count. So I will do increment button dot add event listener and the event we want to listen for is click. And here we pass a callback function. So this is an inline anonymous callback function that will run when the event fires. So let's try that out first. We'll console log click. 
So I click it and we see click being logged out to the console, so that's great. So every time we click, we first want to read the current value from count display. const count is equal to count display dot inner HTML. But this one will come back as a string. So I want to do parse int on this one so that it becomes an integer. Because the next step will be for us to change this value. So we will do count display dot inner HTML is equal to count plus one. And that should be all we need. Let's try out the final result of our little example here. And it all seems to work. So if this was your first time trying out web development, I hope it was clear and it was fun for you and that you got inspired to continue because web development is one of those things that just becomes more and more fun the more you learn. So I hope that you thought that this was a really easy and simple way to get started. It doesn't have to be harder than this to start learning about HTML and styling with CSS and making things come alive with JavaScript. So I hope you liked this video. If you like the content, I would be happy to have you liking the videos, being a subscriber. So thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.